So you want to learn the elusive art of hand painting, but you don't know where to start. Well, luckily for you, Stylized Station has your back. In this video, our good friend Felix is going to give us a great overview of the hand painted workflow from start to finish, and also give us a ton of really cool tricks in between so you can end up with beautiful results as well. Speaking of art, if you really want to learn how to make beautiful game environments like the one you see on your screen here, please feel free to check out my Unreal Engine environment course. Felix gets a cut of all the sales if you click on the link in the description, so feel free to check out the course there. Now, let's get into the video. Hello everyone, I'm Felix Boutier and I'm going to show you how to easily make a fully hand-painted stylite sword with only Maya, 3D coats and marble set 4, so no ZBrush or baking whatsoever. I made this prop during an online class at our side school. To get to the final render, we'll divide the rock into three distinct parts. The modeling, then the painting and finally the rendering. For the modeling, I use Maya, but the principles are the same if you use some different software. At first, you need to spot where the symmetries are, and for me, I could do just one part of the sword and just mirror it toward the end. As always, use a planner with reference in the back, and put yourself in the orthographic view in order to be the most accurate possible. Don't forget to get back in perspective, otherwise you'll end up with a very flat model. Don't hesitate to separate your mesh to have more control over it all. The most important is the silhouette, so the edge need a few more vertices to smooth the curve and add big scratches to gain quality. Stylization means you can go crazy in the shape, and most of the time, people don't stylize enough, putting their work in between realistic and stylized. Because it's meant to be lucrative and not to be put in a video game, I didn't limit myself for the poly count and I ended up with 1600 vertices, which is enough. Once this section was finished, we begin the funniest part, the UV. So I mirrored my sword and unfolded the full side. You need to avoid cutting your UV too much, otherwise it will get messy if you do. Knowing that the other side won't be visible at the same time, we'll just duplicate it after and let it be the same texture on both sides. Once the mesh has the UV unfolded with the right scale and a little bit of padding, you can merge your meshes. For the paint, I recommend you to put every edge on softened edge. We don't care if it doesn't render too good for now, it's only for the painting. It will prevent the brush from going crazy on the hardened edge. Ok, now we're good to do some painting. For the hand paint, I use 3D coats. Now that the model is imported with a 2K resolution, you should import your reference in the color palette. It's always important to have a reference with enough information for you to process. Otherwise, you'll have to create the texture and details yourself, which could be hard if you're a beginner. Having the picture within the software allows you to pick the right color in a click. So, you need to be in the unlit mode to focus only on the painting. You can press 2 on the top of your keyboard for that. Then, toggle the wireframe with W, making it easier to follow the edges and curves. As always, you have to go from big to small. Fill the mesh with the main color. And so, with a simple smooth brush with a low opacity, I started to put the main shadow and the main light. The key is really starting big and not being too clean. It will create variation within your gradient, and don't mind using the symmetry tool for the beginning to gain time. The best is to always paint in the same direction. You have to avoid brushed strokes that are perpendicular. Sometimes using texture brush can be interesting, but if you do use them, it's near the end for the detail. My sword didn't need that, so I stuck to the basic brush. For my example, the hot part of the blade, the symbols and the eye can be on separate layers, making it easier to change the hue, the saturation or else. It's always nice to work from afar and see the whole piece, just to make sure every color is balanced and the level of finishing is the same everywhere. Then I start adding the main scratches and some speck or edge wares. For the rune symbol, you can paint it like that or press Ctrl P to create a bridge between 3D coats and Photoshop if you have it. Then I position my reference of the rune on top and on the layer of the rune, I use the lasso tool to get sharp shape that I fill with a matching color of my reference. Then I deleted the picture and press Ctrl P again to update my painting on 3D coat. 
Back on 3D code, I'll add a speck of light and shadow on it. In general, we aim to fake the lighting and the shadows, so it's important to saturate them. But you have to be careful to separate the lighting of the props and the lighting of the scene in your reference. Using black and white is not a good mix. It usually has a tendency of going into desaturated color and it looks bland. The dark area of your props doesn't have as much detail as the lighten part because the audience are drawn to the lighten parts. And in general, darker means less light, less light means less visibility, hence less details. Now that we have put everything in place, you just have to go more and more in detail, making it cleaner and with some variation. The highlights that are almost pure white are the latest thing I add with a hard brush making it look sharp. Because my props is stylized, I don't need a metalness map or specular map, the painting is already thinking all of that. Once the painting is done, it's time to make it presentable. We just spend a lot of time painting our props, so the goal is to be subtle in terms of lighting and not override or detail with light. Back to our 3D software, I can harden edges that needed it and leave smooth one as they were. The sword is now looking nice, and this one will go to Marmoset. So, in Marmoset, in the material, I put our painting in the albedo, and then remove every option, so no normal, no reflection, roughness, nor metalness, and then apply it to our props. To make it more nice, I extracted the hot metal layer and converted it as a hemisphere mask. Like that, my blade actually looks hot. Then I use a big strong hot red light behind the sword to have a nice rim light highlighting my props. I added smaller light that doesn't cast shadow to make some area more noticeable as the eyes or the top of the sword. You need to balance the lighting and my red light at the bottom is very strong, so it's justified. So I added some pale blue light as the opposite of the props to keep the balance. I then added some effects on Photoshop, mostly with the lasso tool once again. I added some sparks and a fake glow at the bottom. I put it on a plane with an opacity mask and put the albedo map in the emissive so the sparks actually light up. I did the same with the red glow, except it was very smooth and the opacity was very low. At last, a little turntable was added for the video to make it spin. And finally, we have a nice looking fully hand painted props. Hope you enjoyed it and learned a few things. Goodbye everyone.